President, please be seated. The court is now in session. Nous reprenons l'audience. We would like now to give the floor to the national co-prosecutor to finish making her oral closing statement. Pour pour you may now Je vous en prie, madame. Mrs. Chia Liang, thank you, Mr. Merci, President, Monsieur Your Président. Honours. I Mr. will Monsieur need uh, 10 more minutes to finish reading my oral closing statement, and then my colleague Après will quoi, take the floor. Mon collègue interviendra. The Vietnamese prisoners suffered no less than their Cambodian counterparts at S21. This chamber has heard in great detail the physical pain and discomfort caused by the inhumane conditions of detention within S21, the lack of adequate food, medical care and sanitation, and the inhumane methods of execution. Similarly, prisoners' mental suffering, including the anguish caused by seeing fellow prisoners wound from physical abuse and torture, Seeing fellow prisoners de die from wounds, uh, illness, suite, uh, and malnutrition, la, hearing the screams de la maladie, of other prisoners, being tortured and killed, torturés, and living in constant exécuté. fear of enfin, beatings, les dans la peur torture, des and de la execution. Et de we have already discussed the extensive evidence of the intent qui, uh, to cause such great suffering or serious injury. Such grave. criminal intent is consistent for the accused and for those under the accused authority. authority was no different with respect to the Vietnamese prisoners. If anything, the hatred preached by the CPK against Vietnam may well have encouraged those who beat the prisoners to be even more cruel and inhuman towards Vietnamese detainees. Torture. The legal elements required to prove torture as a grave breach of the Geneva Conventions are identical to the elements of torture as a crime against humanity. There is no specific evidence that Vietnamese prisoners were tortured, but it can be reasonably inferred that they received the same treatment as the vast majority of all the other S21 prisoners. In general, torture was specifically used by interrogators to extract confession. Recalcitrant prisoners would receive more torture than those who willingly confessed. The confessions and treatment of Vietnamese prisoners of war filmed and broadcast on the radio would have been intensely humiliating. It is reasonable to conclude that S-21 interrogators had been required to torture at least some of these Vietnamese prisoners of war before they submitted to such humiliation. In the violent and 
depraved environment of S21, it is difficult to imagine that the interrogators would have restrained themselves from physical or physically abusing prisoners from the very country they had been taught to despise. And human treatment. All the evidence of S21 functioned of the appalling conditions of detention and of the behavior of the staff towards the detainees suggest that the Vietnamese prisoners were no less inhumanely treated than their Cambodian counterparts. And human treatment as a grave breach of the Geneva Convention extends not only to acts of torture or the causing of willful suffering, but also to other acts that violate the basic principle of, inhuman, of human treatment, particularly the aspect for human dignity, to the extent that individual acts committed against Vietnamese prisoners may not be considered by the as acts of torture or acts causing willful suffering. They were most certainly inconsistent with the human treatment and human dignity. All Vietnamese prisoners at S21 were killed, witnessed testimony, photographs, information obtained from S21 prisoners, surviving confessions and documented radio broadcasts, all proved the deliberate execution of the Vietnamese prisoners. The accused has admitted that none of the Vietnamese were spared. Crimes contrary to the Cambodian Penal Code of 1956 have now moved to the third and last category of crimes charged in the indictment, the crimes of murder and torture, which are in contravention to Cambodia's national criminal law, the Cambodian Penal Code of 1956. Although the international criminal laws of crimes against humanity and grave breaches of the Geneva Convention may prohibit criminal behavior of different levels of seriousness. Our national criminal law is no less worthy of enforcement. At this is the court for the Cambodian people first and foremost. It is important that the public perceives that its national laws are being respected. Charging offenses under the national law demonstrates that Cambodians' own national laws can protect them as a community. As this is an internationalized Cambodian court, charging national crimes fosters a sense of ownership of the judicial proceedings for the population as a whole and the Cambodian judiciary. Jurisprudence in these and other cases on national laws will likely assist the practice of law in the national courts. Although there were no courts in democratic Cambodia to enforce it, the 1956 Penal Code was the prevailing domestic criminal law at the time the Khmer Rouge came to power. The dismantling the of the criminal justice system, justice penal, the evacuation the of cities, and the murder of judges and, and lawyers did not, not however, not remove democratic Cambodia's uh, underlying international obligations to ensure that those who committed serious crimes would be brought to justice under national legislation. Whatever motivation the accused and his subordinates acted upon at S21, the 1956 Penal Code clearly defined their acts as criminal. Article 3 of the Law on the Establishment of the ECCC empowers these chambers to try suspects for committing specific crimes contrary to the Cambodian Penal Code of 1956. The evidence proves beyond a reasonable doubt that two of these crimes, namely homicide and torture, were committed at S21. Murder. 
meurtre. There are two forms of murder that were included and that were committed at S21. The premeditated murder derived from the deliberate intention to cause the death for the vast majority of S21 prisoners. Deaths from deliberate acts of torture, inhumane treatment, lack of adequate food, sanitation, and medical care accounted for those who did not survive long enough to be executed. Des conditions sanitaires et des soins médicaux qui représentent les causes de décès de ceux qui n'ont pas survécu suffisamment longtemps pour être exécutés. Two distinct forms of torture as criminalized by the 1956 Penal Code were committed at S21, acts of torture committed with the intent to obtain information useful for the commission of the felony or misdemeanor by causing pain and acts of torture committed in a spirit of repression or barbarity. Torture was deliberately inflicted upon the prisoners at S21 with the intent to obtain confession. The information extracted in these confessions resulted in the arrest of those implicated as enemies and who were then themselves tortured and executed. Additionally, plus, these can be no doubt that thoughtful the entire period of S21's operations, torture was used as a tool of repression against the prisoners. The spirit of barbarity ran through the entire prison and found its expression most horribly in the cruel forms of torture ordered by the accused and performed by his subordinates. Your Honours, uh, next uh, I would like to share the floor with my colleague to finish uh, the oral closing statement. I'm very grateful, Your Honours. The President, uh, the International Court Prosecutor, you may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Your Honours, Learned Council, Civil Parties, the accused, members of the public, and the people of Cambodia, I am humbled to stand here today alongside my national colleagues to assist this trial chamber to ensure I believe we have no translation. Yes, Mr. President, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Je suis désolé d'interrompre, mais nous n'avons pas le canal français. Donc je ne sais pas sur quel canal nous devons aller. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we do not have uh, the French channel, so I do not know on which channel uh, the translation is coming uh, through. Est-ce qu'on entend la cabine française? La cabine française, un, deux, trois. Cabine française. La cabine française est en train de faire un test. I am humbled to stand here with my national colleagues to assist this trial chamber to ensure that justice is done for the victims of the S21 security center. The people of Cambodia might rightly ask, what is justice? For the 12,000 men, women, and children killed so cruelly, and what is justice for their grieving families and friends that have to put up with that pain for so long? 
Your judgment le jugement que vous allez rendre not ne va pas bring them back to life. à ressusciter ces Your judgment les personnes will not disparues. Allow le jugement que vous allez rendre ne va pas permettre aux nouveaux-nés de s'émerveiller de ce qu'ils découvrent. Il ne va pas permettre non plus aux enfants disparus de jouer, aux adolescents de danser, aux jeunes adultes de tomber amoureux, Those parents aux parents to hug their children d'embrasser leurs enfants and their parents et to look proudly de at what they've left behind avec sérénité et fierté aux for the victims of S21 alors, aux, aux vies qu'ils ont engendrées. experiences S21 were en effet a coupé court au vécu de uh, toutes ces victimes our job as prosecutors notre tâche à nous, procureurs, est de vous aider à rendre la justice une justice qui ne soit pas celle qu'a rendu l'accusé à S21 à l'époque justice is done by applying the ECC law, a law that demands a fair trial, de la loi relative au CETC, a law that demands convictions based on facts une loi qui exige only proved beyond reasonable doubt, établie sur des faits and a law that demands that your sentence et une loi is in accordance qui exige with international standards of fairness. Décider, soit en accord avec les normes internationales d'équité. A just sentence une peine in law juste en is not based pénale, on revenge, ce n'est pas une peine inspirée par la vengeance, mais une peine deterrence. animée par la volonté de punir et de dissuader. C'est une manière pour la that société de montrer que les gens qui la composent and their lives doivent être protégés et que leur vie est digne de respect. C'est une manière d'envoyer un message to others who may be tempted to commit crimes commettre like this against their fellow human beings. In this case, it's the Cambodian and international communities' way of saying S21 should never have happened and it should never happen again. So, What is a just sentence for this accused? En quoi consistera donc une peine It will depend on the gravity of the crimes, Cela dépendra de la gravité the impact des crimes, on the victims, de l'impact des crimes and his sur les victimes role, et du rôle in them. que l'accusé a joué dans ces crimes. Croyez-vous que he says qu'il dit he was a hostage qu'il était otage et prisonnier du régime from 1971 until the mid 1990s? A prisoner and a hostage forced to kill and torture human beings on a daily basis against his will and under the threat of death with no choice or no chance to escape. Was the author of the crimes in reality a victim of the system? Your Honours, we have stated Madame, in our written submissions, and we will écrit, do so again today, dit, that the accused was neither a prisoner, ni nor a hostage, ni nor a victim. Ni victim. The evidence proves the contrary. C'est le contraire qui ressort des It clearly demonstrates Il that he was an idealist, que l'accusé était un idéaliste, a CPK revolutionary, un véritable révolutionnaire, a crusader, who was prepared to sacrifice everything for his cause, prepared to torture and kill willingly for the good of the revolution, no matter how grotesquely misguided it was. Your Honours, this is the significant difference between the prosecution and the defence. La, Your resolution la of this issue will be essential to the establishment of the accused liability la and consequently the determination of the appropriate sentence. La peine With this in mind, in this part of our submission, we'll first point 
Your Honour, to the evidence of the extent and the nature of the accused participation, and then, second, submit how his participation should be legally qualified under the law and address you on relevant factors we believe you should take into account when determining your sentence. But first, I would like to put the actions of the accused in a wider context. During the democratic Capuchia regime, the accused was promoted to a very senior and important position. Living a comfortable family life, whilst other members of the regime, and in fact many senior cadres, were purged. This was no coincidence. Far from being an ordinary person or an ordinary party member and an accidental security chief, as he has claimed, he manoeuvred himself into the privileged position of S21 chairman by hard work and meticulous attention to detail. The evidence shows he was a true believer in the communist cause who wanted to eliminate its enemies. As such, he developed a strong, direct, one-on-one -on -one connection with the senior leaders of the CPK. Having known them for some years before, Having committed crimes, horrendous crimes at S21 under their supervision, he continued to work with them and for them for almost 15 years after the regime's collapse. After the 17th of April 1975, he held a privileged and trusted position with the CPK, senior leaders who also lived worked and met with him at the railway station in Phnom Penh from the end of June 1975, during this time he was directly involved in the establishment of S21. He was one of only two people invited by Sun Sen to the meeting at the railway station on the 15th of August 1975 when the creation de of S21 de was announced. De S21. In the accused's own words, he was their ears and nose at S21. Et le nez du à S21. He influenced le its very name. Du number 21 was this accused's own de communication, communication number. 21, qui était celui de as the evidence shows, S21 was his professional pride, it was his prison in name, and in reality, his S21. To staff from prison, the accused handpicked his most trusted interrogators and torturers from M13 to follow him there. Having committed crimes with them before, he could rely on them to perform this gruesome work he was about to embark on. He wanted to organize and supervise the S21 machinery, but did not want to do the dirty work himself. He prepared for this new role thoroughly. He collected specialist books on the subject of torture, intelligence, and espionage. Amazingly, 34 years later, he was able to quote from these books to the trial chamber. This is quite astounding for someone who claims that he didn't have enough time to read them. He also collected documents from ministries, public buildings, and Lon Nol's former house in Phnom Penh. Under examination, he said he did this in order to arrest the officials of the former regime. In the beginning, as deputy of S21, he worked hard to make the prison operational. He taught interrogation techniques and held political training classes. As head of the interrogation section, he vigorously pursued enemies by ordering interrogations and torture. Within six months of the establishment 
the accused was promoted to the position of chairman. It was clear from his own evidence that he had far superior intelligence and interrogation skills and, great, and inspired greater trust with the senior leaders than the former chairman, Nath, who later end up, ended up a prisoner at S21. After his appointment as chairman, for close to three years, the accused went on to fully repay and justify the trust placed in him by his superiors. Through his leadership from March 1976, S21 became efficient, efficient at identifying and killing its enemies. And the accused became the essential link between the regime's criminal policies and their execution. Outside S21, he worked closely with CPK senior leaders, continually advising them and reporting to them the content of the important prisoner confessions, thereby facilitating the ident identification and destruction of enemies, and crucially, fueling the raging paranoia. As we have heard from the expert psychiatrist and psychologist, these close relationships with these senior leaders suited the accused, not simply because they were a part of his duties, but because of his constant need to be mentored and of his desire to please and be praised for his work. During the first 18 months as chairman, the accused reported directly to Sun Sen, Minister of Defence, and Chief Minister of the General Staff of the, of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea, Kampuchea, one of the most senior people in the regime. During this trial, the accused has spoken fondly of Sun Sen, calling him his respected teacher, professor, and leader. The two men shared a similar approach, a communist ideology, and it was Sun Sen that introduced the accused to the party as a full rights member in 1969. The accused described Sun Sen as his biggest influence, and Sun Sen would have in turn considered him a gifted protégé indeed. As we've heard from the accused, Sun Sen was replaced by Nguyen Chia in August 1977 when the war with Vietnam began to escalate. Despite this change, the accused retained his position as chairman throughout the intensified purges towards the end of the regime. I will now discuss the extent of his authority at S21. In the judicial investigation, he originally claimed that his authority within S21 was only theoretical and that he was a chairman in name only. However, at trial, he became more truthful. He explained his total authority at S21 in these words. If I wanted to know anything, I can do that. I can ask anyone to report. I can stop anything. I want to direct anything, I can do that. In other words, nothing happened within S21 without his knowledge or approval. We have all seen firsthand during this trial that the accused is meticulous, a logical man bordering on the obsessive de manière presque obsessionnelle, un maître du détail memory, avec une mémoire étonnante, même si elle est sélective. Il ne no fait pas de doute que sous son autorité, les règles étaient toujours respectées et l'ordre était toujours maintenu. C'est la chose remarquable. Bearing in mind the staff under his control, S21 numbered more than 2,000. The evidence has shown that the staff obedience at S21 was a result of the, the accused careful selection and training of personnel, his enforcement of military-style discipline and his policy of immediate arrest and execution for those that did not follow the political line or perform their duties precisely. Simple mistakes 
such as falling asleep on the job or releasing prisoners' names invoke such punishment. We have heard former S21 guards, such as Sao Met, Cox Ross, Chim Sauer, Sek Dan and Prat Khan, testify to this ruthless enforcement of rules which instilled fear in all his staff. Et suscitait la peur chez le personnel. These rules were designed, Ces règles ont été all, conçues to avant tout the pour of prisoners. empêcher les évasions. C'était un task, considering the accused étant donné que l'accusé était responsable, responsable d'environ 1,500 prisoners at any one time at the main compound of S21 and many more at Prasar. He ensured that breach of security protocol was considered grave and was dealt with immediately and severely. Hugh Stray, the head of Prasar and one of the accused closest advisors, was arrested following the escape of his radio telephone operator. operator de the accused condemned Hugh Stray to death. Mort. And even 30 years Et later, has testified that Hugh Stray's lapse was la not reasonable. By contrast, the rape en of revanche, a prisoner le viol went unpunished. However, Toutefois, as strict as these rules were, the accused applied them selectively. De façon Initially, S21 staff included NAF's men from Division 703 and the accused own from M13. Hommes de M13. Over time, que a disproportionate number Avec of NAF men were purged and executed. De In contrast, the accused's most trusted men survived. Avait le plus on we know vécu. from the combined prisoner list and reports concerning the en enemy situation within S21 that at least 155 S21, executed de detainees were former S21 staff members. Though the accused has claimed that the arrest and execution of staff required his superior's approval, it is clear that at the very least, he initiated or approved those arrests and executions. He testified that no request was ever denied. In practice, therefore, it was his decision that was the primary cause of the execution of his staff. Even in this respect, égard, where he had ample là, options to avoid such an extreme form of punishment against those who breached his rules, de he chose ceux qui not to take them. Règles, il pas choisi de le faire. I will now turn to the evidence which proves Je the obsessive, disciplined and merciless way in which this accused implemented the extremist ideology of the CPK at S21. As chairman with absolute authority over his staff and operations, the accused was able to implement the CPK political line without obstruction. This required him through his staff to interrogate, torture, investigate, and smash all those who deemed were deemed to be enemies of the revolution. His principal role at S21 was to ensure that the criminal line of the party was rigorously enforced. During the trial, the accused admitted that he alone was responsible both for the political training and the guided selection of enemies. And the accused admitted that he alone was responsible both for the political training and the guided selection of enemies. As a trained teacher, a meticulous interrogator, and a true believer in the CPK's ideology, the accused was perfectly suited to the role. He also realized that his time was best spent on passing on his expertise to others, mostly young, naive recruits who would inflict pain on his and his superiors' behalf. C'était un fervent principe de l'idéologie du BCK. L'accusé était parfait, dans, euh, parfaitement adapté pour ce rôle. Il a également réalisé euh, qu'il euh, 
transmettre cette expertise à d'autres, principalement des recrues plus jeunes, plus naïves, qui pouvaient appliquer ces supplices, des supplices sûrs et prisonniers. Il a admis que son devoir étudiant doctriné et de l'étranger absolu, je cite. Mesdames et Messieurs les juges, nous avons examiné les carnets de notes des cadres de S21 qui décrivaient les séances de formation en détail. Et euh, lors d'une séance de formation, on identifie la prévalence de pratiques cruelles. La torture ne peut être évitée. Euh, on, cela ne fait que différer un petit peu, mais c'est tout l'interrogateur. L'interrogatoire était quelque chose d'obligatoire. Et il a formé de jeunes recrues à supplicier des milliers d'autres personnes par le biais de ces méthodes de torture. Il a recruté des adolescents euh, d'extraction pauvre. Il a souhaité des personnes disposant de... Euh, d'antécédents de bons antécédents de classe dans les propres mots de la justice. Il fallait recruter ces personnalités comme des pages blanches sur lesquelles on pouvait écrire. Madame et Monsieur le juge, le lavage de cerveau de ces recrutés-moines du fait que euh, l'accusé était un excellent directeur de centre de torture et d'exécution était S21. Il savait qu'il devait mettre la main à la pâte et contribuer à la gestion quotidienne des activités des 21. Pour quelqu'un qui, à présent, prétend qu'il détruit il était assez temps que ça son travail, il est impossible de pouvoir concevoir comment il aurait pu être encore plus efficace dans son travail. Au départ de l'instruction, l'accusé a faim de sa participation réelle à S21 en parlant de questions techniques dans la gestion quotidienne. Effectively controlled au quotidien de euh, However, S21, as the trial il a prétendu que c'était Or qui gérait au quotidien S21 et comme nous avons pu l'entendre au cours de ce procès, euh, par role. le biais également du, des And such a role is fully consistent témoignages, with the meticulous attention to detail, nous pouvons voir ici l'empreinte de l'accusé dans le style strict de gestion des 21 et de l'efficacité abominable qui s'en est suivi par le biais de l'intervention et du travail de l'accusé. Comme nous avons pu l'illustrer dans notre réquisitoire, par le biais d'exemples et d'initiatives prises par l'accusé S21, on peut citer ses ordres et ses recommandations concernant les techniques d'interrogation et les exécutions, sa décision de créer une équipe d'interrogatrices et de sélectionner de jeunes adolescents qui pouvaient être formés comme pour occuper des postes de cadre, sa décision du déplacement du centre, sa décision de la dissimulation d'éléments de preuve, et euh, de His transmettre des informations au ministère site, euh, when requested des by affaires Nguyen sociales sa décision de déplacer S21 à Kasprov en 1978 par peur que Chung Hek allait être découvert. La discipline de fer avec laquelle il gérait son personnel et euh, le fonctionnement et la gestion de Pressar. Je vais maintenant parler de la participation de l'accusé dans les activités heard, criminelles principales de S21. Comme nous avons pu l'entendre, il y avait les arrestations, la détention, l'interrogatoire, la torture, euh, l'analyse des confessions et l'exécution des prisonniers. Euh, dans chacune de ces facettes des activités, l'accusé a participé. Il a montré une détermination et un enthousiasme First, ainsi qu'une méticulosité pour ces crimes pour chacune de ces tâches. Un autre aspect du fonctionnement des 21 euh, qu'il a par ailleurs essayé euh, de diminuer en ce qui concerne sa participation 
but did not initiate or participate in arrests. Ne in brief, pas the accused state, accused state, the 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 accused state
and coordinating a massive purge together with the division commander. Euh, important dans la mise en œuvre de purges à grande échelle et avec Soumette. Et il apparaît de toute évidence que Sun Sen n'avait absolument pas le temps euh, de pouvoir enquêter sur des dossiers spécifiques. D'autres documents de ces dossiers montrent que les unités militaires et administratives correspondaient à une euh, mise en œuvre par l'accusé. Par exemple, Kamad Krim a, a signé un rapport directement adressé à l'accusé en 1977. L'accusé a, a, a reconnu que Kamad San de la 310e division a envoyé une lettre accompagnée d'une liste de personnes arrêtées au sein de cette unité. L'accusé, le conseil et la recommandation de l'accusé étaient recherchés. Des arrestations supplémentaires ont été réalisées. Et une lettre. L'accusé a participé à une autre réunion le 9 septembre 1976 à laquelle ont participé Peng et Son Sen. Voilà, mais monsieur le juge, je dirais en résumé que il est de nombreux éléments de preuve indiquent que l'accusé a joué un rôle essentiel dans l'arrestation et dans l'accusation des ennemis et dans le maintien de communications importantes avec euh, à la fois les hauts dirigeants du BCK et avec les chefs et les responsables à travers le pays. En ce qui concerne la participation dans la détention de prisonniers 21 et la participation directe de l'accusé dans la détention de prisonniers 21, voilà, messieurs les juges ont entendu le témoin Sosti qui a expliqué que l'accusé recevait et signé la nouvelle liste de prisonniers qui avait été préparée par les membres de son personnel. Ceci permettait à l'accusé de suivre les mouvements et le nombre de prisonniers au sein de S21. Lorsque il y a eu surpopulation dans la prison, il a ordonné, il a enjoint hors de tuer les prisonniers qui étaient de trop pour créer de nouveaux espaces, à, pour qu'il y ait suffisamment d'espaces pour accueillir les nouveaux arrivés. Dans ce prétoire, l'accusé a déclaré qu'on ne devait pas, je cite, dépenser, leur donner plus de nourriture, pour, euh, leur donner, dépenser inutilement de la nourriture pour ces prisonniers. L'accusé était uh, tout à fait conscient des conditions déplorables, pitoyables et véritablement inhumaines d'incarcération des prisonniers. Il s'est rendu dans le complexe euh, principal des bâtiments. Il s'y rendait fréquemment, et en particulier dans les salles d'interrogatoire. Il a pu euh, constater les blessures des prisonniers torturés et il pouvait voir des prisonniers émaciés, maigres, malades, euh, qui euh, souffraient de conditions euh, abominables d'incarcération. Euh, on, les prisonniers manquaient de euh, nourriture, de soins médicaux appropriés. Et euh, d'habillé euh, sanitaire. Et il, que ce soit pour les jeunes comme pour les personnes âgées, il a déclaré qu'il les traitait tous comme des animaux et il ne faisait pas attention à des prisonniers. Uh, As que comme nous avons déjà déclaré l'accusé du PCK, l'interrogatoire des ennemis des prisonniers a été mené à des fins d'arracher des confessions qui était la partie la plus importante de ce processus. Il a nécessité un, un il He fallait un spécialiste, comme l'accusé, un spécialiste de l'interrogatoire qui disposait d'une expérience complète et d'une con, forte conviction. Il a formé à ses fins les, les interrogateurs subordonnés et surveillé leur travail. Il connaissait euh, des 
uh, which he either directed personally or closely uh, supervised. Uh, specific at first, uh, he only admitted to interrogating one prisoner, North Zone Secretary Coetan. L'accusé appréciait énormément d'interroger les prisonniers importants et, et uh, s'occuper personnellement, well contrôler personnellement ce qui se passait lorsqu'un prisonnier important était présent. Il a admis avoir interrogé Coyton, Mankin et Cheat et peut-être bien d'autres encore. Et il euh, avait un rôle his willingness to interrogate prisoners important. himself and his obsessive et attention to the details of the interrogations in the process betrayed a chairman euh, heavily invested in the work of S21. Et 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 Yet his ownership of the process de son rôle S21. was not et cependant, son intervention dans le processus n'est pas seulement le, le seul signe révélateur. Son indifférence à la souffrance correspond à ce qui et la souffrance des prisonniers sub 21 illustre le fait qu'ils ne ressentaient pas d'empathie vis-à-vis des prisonniers. Certains lui ont supplié d'épargner les membres de leur famille. C'était le cas pour Setchak et Mektouk. Non seulement il leur a refusé cela, mais lorsque Setchak a plaidé qu'il avait été, que son arrestation n'était pas justifiée. L'accusé lui a répondu que euh, pendant tous ses jours de travail dans le domaine de sécurité, il n'avait jamais connu un cas où un individu avait fait l'objet d'une euh, arrestation euh, par erreur. Il était endurci absolu. L'accusé ne trouvait, n'avait absolument pas de pitié. Euh, même pour ses proches amis et associés, euh, son mentor, euh, ses premiers jours, et son professeur Kim Hut et la femme de Hoot, euh, Dim Saron, ont été arrêtés et amenés à S21. Ils ont, été, ils ont subi des tortures horribles. Euh, Hoot a, a subi la bastonnade, a été forcé de manger des excréments. Saron a été violé avec un euh, bâton. Euh, L'accusé n'avait pas vraiment de réponse euh, donnée debout vis-à-vis -vis de ses outrages et, et a nié avoir eu connaissance de ces événements. Il a nié toute crédibilité de son point de vue dans la torture de Kei Kimhut. Les annotations de l'accusé en ordonnant la torture et orientant les questions des interrogateurs figurent sur des centaines de confessions qui ont survécu à 21 en l'espèce, madame et messieurs les juges. Nous n'avons vu qu'une petite partie. Cependant, il reste un échantillon évocateur qui démontre le manque total de pitié de l'accusé vis-à-vis des prisonniers. Et je cite interroger méticuleusement grave Hit mais modéré torture importante mais modérée de manière à trouver les et à dénicher les réseaux frapper jusqu'à ce qu'il arrête de dire à ce qu'elle arrête de dire qu'elle est venue au Vietnam avec son grand-père pour soigner son cancer et le problème son problème de menstruation Madame et Monsieur le Juge vous rappellerez des annotations de l'accusé qui ordonnait directement la méthode d'interrogation de Mensa Aliasia, le euh, révolutionnaire vétéran et une personne entretenant euh, des rapports importants venant et secrétaire de la zone nord. Après avoir ordonné que Yah soit torturé euh, à travers euh, son, tout au long de son interrogatoire, l'accusé euh, lui a dit d'essayer 
it would not be a violation of revolutionary discipline. Euh, de sa confession de départ As council, euh, council et que ceci était le produit de après avoir perdu patience avec elle, l'accusé a ordonné que Pond, son interrogateur, utilise la méthode chaude, le rassurant que s'il si dérapait et, et que Ya mourait, bah, ce ne serait pas une violation de la discipline Although révolutionnaire. The do not the, the the Bien M13, que les chefs d'accusation ne comprennent pas les crimes commis à M13, Madame le Monsieur le juge, vous avez entendu et lu des éléments de preuve qui prouvent que l'accusé a personnellement torturé les prisonniers dans ce centre Your de sécurité bien avant de commencer à travailler à l'AS21. Madame et Monsieur le juge, je vous rappellerai le témoignage de l'accusé concernant son interrogation approfondie, la, tor la torture de Napson Bond, un prisonnier à M13. Il a dit, je cite, j'ai presque un mois à mener Therefore, à bien cette interrogation torture, par conséquent la torture, la bastonnade et l'interrogatoire. Je me suis efforcé, j'ai fait de mon mieux pour le faire. Vous vous souviendrez aussi du témoignage du prisonnier français, M. François Bizot, qui a été détenu à M13 dans la première année de fonctionnement de 1971. After forming a special relationship with the accused, on Christmas Eve that year, the accused confided confided in Bizo on his practice of personally torturing prisoners. Bizo recollects the conversation in his book where the accused says to him, and I quote, Most of the people who arrive here, it's my responsibility to interrogate them, to find out who their contacts are, what type of information they're looking for, and who's paying them. Just one of those traitors could jeopardize our whole struggle. Do you think they're going to reveal what they know of their own free will? Bizo then said, but who does the beating? To which the accused responded, I can't stand their duplicity. The only way is to terrorize them, isolate them, and starve them. It's very tough. I have to force myself. You cannot imagine how much their lying infuriates me. When I cross examine them, and they resort to every ruse to avoid talking. Denying our et, senior uh, officers potentially vital information, then I beat them. Je les I beat je until I'm out of breath. En être hors de All of the other witnesses, one detainee and two prison guards from M13, who've testified in this case, corroborate the basic les autres fact témoins, un détenu, deux which the de accused confirms M13, that he personally participated in torture at M13. Uh, it can be reasonably inferred M13, that this practice occurred throughout M13's four years of operation. Uh, qui vrai à M13, a été pendant les Further, de at S21, The accused himself has admitted that in the early days, he would hit, or as he puts it, slap prisoners during investigations, Chit Eve being one of them. Yet the evidence you have heard has shown that this practice of physical abuse continued on. Dont vous avez eu connaissance, se montre que cette We have heard the testimony of Lakmi, Chan Pao, and read the evidence of Nyem N. S21 staffers who all witnessed the accused beating detainees with sticks de in 1977. About two years into the prison's operation, another former S21 guard, Sao Met, testified before you that in 1978, the accused kicked and beat prisoners with rattan sticks. If he felt they had not relieved, revealed enough information, the accused did not refute any of these statements. 
At other times, the accused obviously just enjoy power. You will remember the testimony of Bu Meng, who testified that. One day, I didn't know what I did wrong. He asked me that Stoic, the accused, and Im Cham to beat each other up. So we were given a piece of black plastic tube to hit, to beat each other. And he sat there watching us beating each other up. After a while, he ordered us to stop. The accused confirmed giving this order, but couldn't even remember why he did it. Your Honours, what should we make of this personal involvement in beating and torturing over a period of seven and a half years? It provides clear proof that his argument that he was forced and unwilling to carry out his work at S21 is simply untrue. Why would he personally involve himself in torture and beating when he was not ordered or required of him. The answer is that his ardent beliefs in furthering the goals of the CPK spilled over into gratuitous violence against prisoners unordered and unnecessary, even at a stage when, due to his seniority, he was not participating in torture on a daily basis. We submit that infliction of pain was not something he hated. It was something that he found both necessary and perversely gratifying. I will now discuss the accused's involvement in the analysis of the information that resulted from the torture and interrogation sessions, the infamous confessions. These so-called confessions were the lifeblood of S21's criminal machinery. The accused had the authority alone to analyze and annotate thousands of pages of these documents and to synthesize their content into coherent reports for his superiors. Only a portion of this meticulous work remains, but from what we have, the attention to detail he lavished upon these upon this hideous endeavor is astonishing. The result of his work, the accused admits, was that suspects whose names he extracted from the confession ended up waiting their turn to be tortured and killed at S21. And all this while he knew that 90% of these victims presented no danger to the party. In the beginning, the accused regularly reported his information to his superior, Sun Sen. When Nguyen Chia took over from Sun Sen, the accused reported to him in person rather than on the telephone. Such briefings apparently took place every day. The accused has claimed by 1978, Nguyen Chia paid little attention either to the confessions the accused was sending or to his annotations upon them. Yet the court has seen annotations that prove that even in the period the accused continued to work on the confessions, in fact, as late as 9th December 1978, a period when the confusion of the regime and the paranoia had set in. His, his commitment was not fading. The picture the accused has attempted to paint is that he was neutrally relaying the information contained in the confessions and that the information was obtained from questions specifically posed by his superiors. Given the thousands of prisoners who pass through S21 every year, this degree of micromanagement from Sun Sen and Nguyen Chia is simply implausible. For the most important prisoners, the accused may well have received specific guidance, but for the majority of prisoners, he applied his own initiative and techniques and exercised his discretion on the modes of interrogation and torture. 
The accused has claimed that the sole purpose of his annotations was to enable his superiors to grasp the content of the confessions quickly, and thus his annotations were devoid of subjective content. This claim is absurd. The accused's role at S21 was to investigate the prisoners and to provide analysis of their responses to his superiors. After all, as we've stated, he was a highly trusted and reliable security expert and specialist in interrogations. This court has seen numerous examples of him synthesizing the content of the confessions in his summary reports, presenting his own analyses and conclusions, and requesting authorization for further arrests. Dans lesquels il présente sa propre analyse, ses propres conclusions et demande l'autorisation de procéder à de nouvelles arrestations. Even now, 30 years on from the crime, he can discuss in minute detail the relationships between various party members et des rapports qui liaient les différents cadres du parti et les différents scénarios. His connections to the party center gave him additional resources to understand the supposedly traitorous network. These connections avec le centre du parti lui ont donné all finally came together in another illustration of the conspiracy theories he had developed and which underpinned the crimes in S21, a document entitled The Last Joint Plan. This plan, written by the accused, trusted chief interrogator Pon, weaves a multitude of incoherent torture-induced confessions together into one massive interconnected network of plots. This plan, dated in 1978, confirms that the accused was deeply invested in his work and was maximizing his intelligence gathering by his interrogation teams to assist the CPK leaders in pursuing and killing more perceived enemies of the regime. This was at a time when he said he was the most disillusioned with the party and his fear was at its greatest. I'll now turn to the accused role in the execution of the over 12,000 victims at S21. The ultimate crime of S21, of course, was the murder of all but a handful of prisoners. The accused admitted that he knew every prisoner at S21 was destined for execution regardless of sex, age, background, or actual guilt or innocence. You have seen the evidence of the documents contained containing the accused direct written orders to kill. They are chilling in their unemotional, unapologetic, ruthless efficiency. On a list of 17 prisoners, including nine children, he simply wrote, Uncle Peng killed them all. Uncle Peng, tu les tous. On another, he wrote, un autre, il écrit, interrogate four, interroge quatre kill the rest. Tu les autres. Sometimes he Parfois, simply ticked off names with the annotation, avec smash. Annotation, comme tech, écrasé. Of course, given his workload and having to manage the arrest, detention, interrogation, torture and killing of an average of at least 300 prisoners a month, personal participation in the killing would not have been the best use of his time. As we noted earlier, the accused taught and directed his staff in the art of interrogation, torture and killing, so he could achieve what business operators call economies of scale. He basically managed his staff and facilities to the best of his ability to ensure that the CPK would capture and kill as many enemies as possible. There has been much debate concerning the accused claim that the consent of his superiors was required before every torture and every execution. In one sense, this is immaterial, given that the accused was responsible for the entire operation at S21. In any event, whether the orders of the senior leaders were required or not, it was the accused who transmitted them and ensured their implementation. As he has admitted, 
uh, for an incident an when he sent Hoare, when Hoare, his deputy, sent a prisoner for execution without a complete confession, Sun Sen sub subsequently required all executions to be pre-approved by the accused. But regardless of this, while fully aware and approving of S21, the senior leaders would have been too busy or too aloof to examine the cases of anyone apart from the most important prisoners. For the vast majority of prisoners, they trusted the accused to exercise his judgment without individual consultations. The senior leaders trusted the accused to kill everyone at the right time. Your Honours, when you review the evidence of the accused's efficiency, initiative, dedication, drive, enthusiasm and zeal, there is absolutely no doubt that as misguided as he was, he was a fully willing participant in these crimes. The defence would like you to hypothesise that the accused did all of this hating it at every step of the way and only acted in fear. La défense voudrait vous faire croire que l'accusé l'a fait. The defense are asking you to move away from the evidence and accept a theory that has little basis in it and even in the accused's own admissions. Far from being unwittingly entangled in the criminal policies of the Khmer Rouge, the accused was a strong believer in the regime's communist ideals and its ill-conceived revolution. It's this firm political belief and philosophical grounding that gave him the resolve to develop and prove himself personally and professionally in the spirit of the revolution and to become an intelligence and security expert on whom the regime relied to such a significant extent. Although he claims that he believed in the revolution, that, that he believed in the revolution early on, but felt trapped after 1971, all of the evidence in this case clearly disproves it. As the defence rightly point out, no one dreams of becoming a mass murderer. However. In this case, the accused developed such an obsession with CPK's ideology that he was prepared to do anything at all to further it. Of course, the nature and the extent of the crimes at S21 could not be justified, no matter how laudable the accused believed the goal to be. Evidence of his level of participation in the crimes, both at M13 and S21, leaves no doubt this accused was a leading crusader for the CPK and not a fearful, reluctant actor, a prisoner, a hostage of the regime. As I mentioned earlier, François Bizot had the opportunity to observe the accused belief systems based on many conversations the two men had during his detention at M13 in 1971. When he was released, he recorded the beliefs of the man he left behind. I quote, I realized that in front of me there was a man who looked very much like many friends of mine, a Marxist, a human being who was a Marxist, who was prepared to surrender his life for his country and for the revolution. At the time Bizot formed his opinion, it was six months after the accused had started at M13, at a time when he had already committed many violent beatings against detainees, of which Bizot has told us. His belief in the CPK...
Le président interrompt. The president interrupts. Since it is an appropriate time to take an adjournment, uh, the chamber will take the adjournment uh, for 15 minutes. We resume at 5 past 3. Some